All right, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna be talking about a property for Flexbox that you may not even know of that's gonna make your life so much easier when specifying the space between rows and columns within Flexbox itself. Now this property is called gap, which is actually a shorthand for the property of column gap and also the property of row gap. Now you can think of it as something very similar to how you have with margin and padding where you can define either padding top, padding right, padding bottom or padding left, or you can simply go ahead and just use the property of padding. Now I like to mention that this property isn't relatively new. It's been around for quite a few years, as you can see right here, dating back to 2018 on Firefox where it was actually supported. Now, the main reason why you probably didn't hear too much about this property, as you can see here, there is a lot of red, meaning it wasn't supported across all modern browsers. Now, by modern browsers, I mean Edge, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. Now, that went ahead and changed here in early 2020 when Edge and Chrome actually released support for this on their browsers. Now, still at that point, it really wasn't safe to use because you can see here Safari didn't accept it, iOS on Safari didn't accept it, and it still wasn't really widely accepted across a lot of browsers here. But back in April of 2021, this year, as of when I'm making this video, Safari released support, and you can see here it is now supported on Safari, it is supported on Safari iOS, Android browsers, Chrome for Android, Firefox for Android, and also Samsung internet, making it much more safer to use inside of your project. So here I have a couple of code snippets that I wanted to use to show you how we're gonna be using gap to add separation in between our flex items versus a older approach that you'd use to go ahead and get the same result. Now, let's start off here on the left with our new approach. So I have two different snippets here, which are exactly the same. Now, the top snippet here is using the shorthand property of gap, where the bottom snippet is going to be using the property of row gap and column gap. Now, I prefer to use the top snippet here with the shorthand property of gap. Now, when you do this, the first value here is going to uh, assign the row gap, and the second value is going to assign the column gap. Now to demonstrate this, I have an illustration here on the next slide, and what we have here is two rows and three columns, okay? Now I have a legend on top here for column gap, which is purple, and row gap, which is orange. So in our example here, hypothetically, we gave it a row gap of 20 and a column gap of 40. So what that would mean in this example is that in between each one of these columns here, we're going to have 40 pixels of separation, okay? And then with our row gap, we assign that 20 pixels. So between this top row here or the first row and the second row, we're going to have a separation of 20 pixels. And that's how gap goes ahead and works. Now, on the right-hand side here, I have a approach that you may have used in the past to get a very similar result. Now, this would mainly pertain to column gap and not row gap. To get more of a row gap, you would want to apply maybe a margin bottom, but we're not gonna go ahead and get into that. So, what we're doing here is on each one of our flex items, which is this right here, each one of these are a flex item, we're giving it a margin right of 20 pixels. Okay, so that means 20 pixels on the right of this one, this one, and this one. Now, that's fine, but when we get to the last one here, we don't want a margin right, and that's where this selector right here, uh, flex item and child 3n, which means every third child, we're gonna give it a margin right of zero. So this would go ahead and give a margin right of zero on this one and this one, giving us a very similar result to using gap here. But as you can see, this is a much cleaner and easier approach in my opinion as to doing something like this. All right, now that we have some history and background on our property of gap for Flexbox, I wanted to jump into VS Code here really quickly and give you an example of how exactly this works. Now, inside of my index.html file here, I have a flex container, and inside of my flex container, I have six flex items, which you can see here in our browser is matching up to that, okay? Now, to display this index.html file in my browser, I am using a plugin for VS Code called Live Server. Now, inside of our style sheet here, I did some initial styling. And you'll see I have a reset here. I have our flex container set to display flex, padding top, max width, centering it using a margin zero auto, flex wrap on the actual container itself. And then for our flex items here, text align to the center, padding around all sides of 50 pixels, 
background color, and then a color of white here. Now to get this into a two row, three column layout, what I can do is we're gonna pass in a flex basis here, and we're gonna say 28%, and that'll put it into a three column, two row layout within our flex container here. Now, what I wanna do is add some spacing using our new gap property here. So what we're gonna say here is 40 pixels of row gap, and then for our column gap, I'm gonna go ahead and say 60 pixels here, okay? And then as you can see now, we have our two rows and our three columns here with one simple line of CSS. Now, I wanna show you the other way that we used to do this, just to kind of give you a comparison to how much simpler this gap property is compared to perhaps a older method that I showed you a few moments ago. So what I'm gonna do is comment this out here. And we gave it a column gap of 60 pixels, which is going to be a margin of right. For example, we can say 60 pixels here. Okay, but as you can see right now when we did that, we only have two columns and now we have three rows because what's happening here is that last item in the row that we you know wanted to or the column we wanted to create is actually applying that margin right of 60 pixels so i also want to give it a margin bottom to account for a row gap here so we'll say 40 pixels there now how we can fix this is if we head down below our flex item selector here and we say flex item and we're going to say nth child here and to get every third uh, flex item class here, we can pass in 3n, okay? And then what we wanna do here is pass margin right and put that to zero. So that is the way you used to go ahead, or you still can do this, but this is a older approach that you can go ahead and do to get the same result as our gap here, all right? So let's go ahead and remove this here and we'll get rid of this and we'll just reinitiate our gap property here which in my opinion is a much simpler and easier way to get the same result with only one line of CSS. Okay, so that's gonna go and wrap it up here for our video on the property of gap for Flexbox. If you guys did enjoy and you wanna see more videos like this here on the channel with some CSS tips and tricks, be sure to leave a like on this video and drop a comment down below saying that you wanna see more of these types of videos. And if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.